What's up YouTube, how's everybody doing out there? Today I'm on the way to deliver a parcel and it's coming up for golden hour, so... So I'm going to spend like half an hour and take a walk through Maniunk and see if I can make a few good pictures. All right, it's now the next day. I don't know where the piece of video went where I said I was cutting this short because I thought I got some good photos and I was freezing cold. But I have to say, after like a 10 or 15 minute walk just under the train station in Maniunk, I didn't even go any further than that. I actually got some pretty cool photos. There was some puddles and walking past them, they just look like small dirty puddles. But when you put the camera up really close to them, they start to look like massive, like, huge puddles on the floor so they made some pretty cool reflections and and i think my favorite photo of that whole set was actually like the first or maybe the second photo that i took you've got the buildings on the one side from the street and then you've got that strip of light and the one person walking down the middle and then you've got the sort of dark underpass of of the train station i didn't even notice that person was really there at the time i think i was aware of someone walking towards me but i was too busy thinking about the reflections in the picture and it wasn't until i got back and put those pictures on the computer and it came up and i saw the person there and it was like highlighted with a strip of light in the middle and i was like it could have just been a little bit closer and it would have been probably perfect but beggars can't be choosers i think it looks pretty great I've also always struggled with finding a style that I like for street photos or city photos but the way I edited this one I really liked and if I can keep that consistent throughout photos going forward then maybe I'll actually be able to keep a f <laughs> then maybe I'll actually be able to keep a consistent style in my photos so what I thought I'd do for the end of this video is just run you through the edits that I did on this photo to give you an idea of how I edited it and maybe you'd find it useful especially if you're a beginner in Lightroom or in photo editing at all and yeah so let's crack on shall we all right so here we are in Lightroom and this is the raw file that I've got in front of us the first thing I noticed is how bad of an angle I was holding the camera at so I'm gonna go down and hit transform and just hit auto and I'll just kind of straighten things up a little bit more for us and I close that up and then I'm gonna go up into the crop and now this, I want this guy to be right in the centre, so I'm just going to crop in about there, and now we can see he's centred in the picture. Close the crop tool, and then go down to lens corrections, and just pop them on. The next thing I'm going to do is start with the white balance, I'm just going to work my way through this whole panel here. And I'm going to go to daylight for the white balance to start with. And I think I'm just going to drop the tint slightly, and I'm actually going to add a little bit of warmth in there. I think around about there looks good. All right, so in the tone, I'm going to leave the exposure as it is. I'm going to pop the contrast up, maybe to about 12. I'm going to go to the highlights, and just leave that at about 3. I'm going to bring the shadows up quite a lot. Going on to the whites, I'm going to add about 25 or so. And then I'm going to go about negative, negative 20 for blacks. 
I'm going to take the clarity to about minus 10, just to kind of soften the image up, make it look slightly more dreamy. Uh, I don't often touch vibrance and saturation, but this time I'm going to add plus 10 on both. I want to add a bit more colour into the photo. I'm going into the tone curve, I'm going to drop in three more points around there. Starting with this low point here, I'm going to bring it up a little bit to fade the blacks. I don't like to do it too much, otherwise it gets a bit weird looking. I'm going to drop down this point and add a little bit more contrast in and just darken up those blacks again a little bit. I don't want the photo looking too vintage. With the mid-tones, I'm just going to pump them up a tiny bit, like it's pretty much still dead in the centre. For the highlights, I'm going to bring them up a little bit as well, give that nice sort of S-curve and the tone curve there. Next I'm going to go into the HSL section and if you can't see all of the colours here, you might have like a single one selected. If you just click on this all over here and it'll drop all of them down. And I'm just going to work my way through these and sort of like tweak them slightly to give it a bit more of a unique look. I'm going to start by dropping the reds down a fair bit. There's not a lot of reds in this photo, but we'll drop them down anyways. Take the saturation out a little bit. And the oranges, I want to make them more towards the red side. So I'm going to drop them down to about, yeah, about 35. I'm going to add some saturation in with the orange to about plus 30 I think looks good. I'm going to add about 15 luminance, just sort of brightens them up a little bit. In the yellow section I'm going to make them slightly more orange as well, so I'm going to bring that down quite a lot actually, and about there. We're going to take some saturation out of the yellows though. And for the greens we're going to bring them a lot more over to the right hand side, around about plus 24. I'm going to take saturation out of those as well, just a little bit. Aquas, I'm going to bring them towards the blue side, around about there. I'm also going to desaturate those slightly, then add in some luminance as well. Now in the blues, I'm going to bring those down towards the aqua side. Again, there's not a lot of blues in the photo, but it just helps to add a little bit of tonality. Now for the blues, I'm going to bring them down towards the aqua side. Now there's not a lot of blues in the photo, but it helps to bring out the kind of tones that you want in there. Saturation again, I'm going to bring that down quite a bit. And then I'm going to leave purples and magentas alone. So for split toning, what I like to do is click on this box here and it brings up all, it brings up this whole colour panel and then just click and sort of slide through all the different colours until you find the kind of colour that you want. In this picture I want to put some blue in the highlights, so I'm thinking round about there and then you just bring it down to desaturate that a little bit. And in the shadows I think I want to add a warm tone in there, so maybe round about here and then desaturate that. That looks good to me. Going into the detail tab, I'm just going to add a little bit of sharpening in there and then pull the masking up. Now one thing you can do is if you hit the option key with masking, it will show you the areas that it's sharpening. So everything in white it is sharpening and I just want to sharpen the most contrasty edges of the picture. So mask off quite a lot and that's the only parts that it's going to affect. So that's it for like the basics of the edit. So that's it for the basics of the edit, but I also want to add a few more filters in just to sort of bring out this person in the middle here, darken down the edges. So I'm going to take the graduated filters and I'm going to select burn and I'm just going to bring in a darker filter on each side of the picture. Pull it in there a bit and a darker filter on the top and the same on the bottom. And the one on the left I might darken just slightly, but it's already pretty dark over there so I might just leave it at that. The one on the right, it's a lot brighter on the right hand side so I want to bring the exposure down a fair bit to darken that side, sort of balance it out a little bit. And then on the top I'm just going to bring the exposure down slightly there too. And then the same thing on the bottom, bring it down a little bit but not too much. I'm going to go over here to the radial filter tool and I'm just going to make like an oval shape over the top of the guy as well as over the top of his reflection here in the puddle. I'm just going to boost the exposure up to, I think round about there looks good. And I'm going to add some clarity into this just to help him to sort of pop out of the background. Now at this point I could quite happily call this photo done, but I had one more thing that I think adds just a little bit extra interest and a little bit more pop to the photo. So I'm going to get another graduated filter and I'm going to select colour. Now down here in the colour section, I'm going to select this blue around about 227 and bring the saturation to about 28 right there and then I'm going to bring that in from the left hand side until it reaches the strip of light in the centre and then I'm going to hit new I'm going to change the colour to about 305 and then about 15% saturation for that one 
And then I'm going to bring that one in from the right hand side, again until it meets the center point. I think that just adds this like opposing colors from either side of the picture and just adds slightly more interest to the dark areas on each side. To be honest, I think it could be argued either way, whether it adds anything to the photo or not, but I like the sort of opposing colors on either side of the picture, and I think it just kind of adds another layer of interest to the photo. Alright, so that is it. Hopefully you found that useful. Thank you very much for watching. Drop me a comment, let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>